Phillips, our Pledge of Allegiance <coughs> by Mr. Pickens. Father, as we begin the proceedings in this room, we know that we are in your presence. Whether we go to the highest, highest, or down to the lowest, low, Father, you are there and your creation is there. And so, Father, for each and every one of us in the room this morning, we ask that you prepare us, that you enable us to be stewards of our part of your creation. Help us, Father, to, with passion and with civility, express our needs and make our request. Father, may the commissioners seated here this morning, their staff and those behind the scenes, may they ask you, Father, liberally for wisdom and guidance as they administer the needs of this county. But, Father, may they also ask you for an extra measure of compassion so that they can manage, lead this county with the same love and compassion that you lead us. And, Father, we ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Take a move for approval of the minutes. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the March 27th meeting, the regular meeting, and March 13th workshop meeting. Yeah. Proper first. I'll second. Proper first, proper second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion approves with minutes. And we're going to have a proclamation, and I'm not sure who is going to. Uh, uh, is there any presentation anybody knows of to the Child Abuse Prevention Month? Okay, right here. Yes, you have. A okay, that's what I wanted to find out. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get a have it. Morning. 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 Um, as you know, um, April is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and usually we signify that with pinwheels planted throughout the community. Thank you. <laughs> and um, sometimes people think that the pinwheels represent the number of child deaths or the number of children abused each year, and this year we're trying to change the message. We want the pinwheels to represent the number of children that are engaged in activities that prevent the Department of Children and Families from getting involved in a family's life. So it could be regular medical appointments. It could be getting good grades in school. It could be something as simple as being involved in extracurricular activities, but a flag, to, uh, I'm sorry, a pinwheel to represent each one of those children. Um, we find that those activities tend to prevent engagement with the Department of Children and Families because parents are more involved with their children's lives or caregivers. We're having a Putnam County community block party on the 18th at the CBC on Reed Street, and the community's invited. You, got, you all are invited as well. It's from four to seven on the 18th and that's to also celebrate prevention and to give parents and children you know um, opportunities for um, further prevention initiatives so you're welcome to come but thank you for um, the proclamation and help recognizing child abuse prevention month can we get your name and address for the record please yeah Sorry. thank you <laughs> my name is charles puckett i'm the community development administrator for circuit seven which is the department of children and families um, and my address is based out of Daytona, it's on 210 North Palmetto, um, Daytona Beach, Florida, 32114, Suite 440, but I also cover Putnam County, Flagler County, and St. John's counties. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Goddard, are you ready? Declaring April 2018 Child Abuse Prevention Month in Florida, whereas Florida's future depends on nurturing and, and the healthy development of more than four million children currently in our state, and whereas the abuse and neglect of children can cause severe, costly, and lifelong problems, and whereas research, has, research shows that parents and caregivers who have support systems and know how to seek help in times of trouble are more resilient and better able to provide safe environments and nurturing experiences for their children, 
And whereas individuals, businesses, schools, and faith-based and community organizations must make children a top priority and take action to support the physical, social, emotional, and educational develop it, development and competency of all children, and whereas during the month of April, Prevent Child Abuse Florida in collaboration with the Governor's Office of Adoption and Child Protection, the Florida Department of Children and Families, and the, and the Ounce of Prevention Fund of Florida will implement Pinwheels for Prevention, a statewide campaign promoting awareness of health, child development, positive parenting practices, and the types of concrete support families needed within their communities. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners that April 2018 is Child Abuse Prevention Month in Florida, and all Floridians are urged to engage in activities who purpose is, whose purpose is to strengthen families and communities to provide the optimal environment for healthy child development. Mr. Chairman, I order I move this forward for approval. We have a proper first, a proper second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Proper proclamation moves. Thank and you. thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much for what you thank do. You. Thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Okay. A presentation by Greened It Up. Uh, Clean It Up, Green It Up by Kristen Mitchell. I don't see her here. She might be running late, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> that could happen depending on where you're at. That's right. Uh, unfortunately, we have had a lot of water out there. Okay, uh, at this time we're going to recess our meeting and go to our Port Authority meeting. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move approval of the minutes. Okay, we have a proper first. I'll second it. Okay, and a proper second. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Approval of minutes moves. Do we have any public comment on Port Authority items? Again, I'll open it up for any public comment on Port Authority items. Seeing none, we'll close that. Is there any new business on Port Authority? Mr. Manning, I didn't know if you had anything on the... Uh, lease, sir. Mr. Chairman, if I could, could I get Mr. Manning just a brief update on our new tenant at the uh, Port Authority, at the Port Facility, I'm sorry. Um, everything working for that fellow? Uh, as far as I know, I haven't heard otherwise. Okay. It's moving That's along good news. since we got the, the, the lease executed. Um, although uh, staff may have some additional information, but I haven't been involved anymore. Okay. Okay, anybody? Seeing nothing on the new business, let's move to old business. Do we have any comments on the old business? None. Okay, then we will close the Port Authority meeting and reconvene our scheduled board meeting. And at this time, we're going to have public comment. Uh, these blue cards, if you fill out a blue card, give it to Tony and uh, bring it up. But uh, I will start with the very first one is Mr. Kenny Downs. Please give your name and your address and try to keep it to three minutes. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm Kenny Downs, 2020 Ashbrook Lane. Uh, thank you for hearing me this morning. Um, I'm here to speak for the recreation fields at Francis. This past weekend they had 40 teams from north and central Florida here to play had probably 1,500 to 2,000 people there. Uh, restrooms are the issue. Restrooms and the ladies' restrooms quit working. There was one working and no water at the facility. They had about 25 little girls at one time lined up to go to the men's restroom. Um, it's really kind of a deplorable situation when you get right down to it. We got an opportunity to show our community off uh, regularly out there we have anywhere from a thousand to fifteen hundred people citizens that are out there every week and we face the same thing every week I've talked to Representative Payne I've talked to Senator Perry uh, they're both very supportive of this and I think they can get us some help this session 
but we need this commission to help out. You know, when we have people coming off, they've got a district tournament in June. It's really embarrassing when you don't have portalettes. And I'm not saying it's your fault. I'm saying it's embarrassing that we don't even have portalettes there. And there's nothing worse than portalettes at a facility like that. We need to have nice restrooms. I followed my grandchildren to different places from Waycross to Citra to Waycross has got a Sunny's and a Hardy's. That's all they got. But they got a really nice recreation facility that's used every weekend. It costs five dollars a person to get in for adults to get in. They keep it up very nice. We've got a nice facility out there with just a little bit of work could be a really nice facility. But restrooms are the issue. When people go spend the day at the ballpark, they gotta go to the restroom and it makes us look as a county really bad. I was asked to come out this past Saturday, open it with prayer, salute to the flag, throw in the first pitch, and I was very proud of that. They lined up around the field. We had 40 teams out there. Wow. Guys, we gotta do something. It's just, we've talked about it and talked about it. I've talked to commissioners individually, I will share very quickly this with you that our last representative in Tallahassee said, we can get that done. He said, you think you can get part of the money? I said, yep, I think. Well, Rick Leary knew what the situation was. I came and called him. He said, at the time we needed, we felt like $100,000. Unfortunately, it's probably 200 today with the price of, of um, your drain fields, the way they're going up is probably $200,000 today. I called him back in about 15 minutes and said, I got my 50, if you got your 50, we still don't have that 50. That was a good bet for Rick because he knew he couldn't get the money. You know, I knew that too. But um, I'm here today as a citizen of this community, a taxpaying citizen of this community to ask for your help. And I tell you what, this commission will make an effort to do something. I'll start the ball rolling as an individual and pledge $1,000 towards you and ask you, to, ask you to come in and let's do our part. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Kenny, for bringing that to our attention. Okay. Next will be Sheila Holloway. Sheila Holloway, address is 112 East Calpin Lake Point Road. And I'm here to discuss our little killer dogs out there. Now, I live only, there's only one property in between me and those dogs. It's a long piece of property, it's very narrow. A good friend of mine lives there. She has to park her car in my yard and go through the gate that we have connecting our properties together because that way she's closer to getting to her door. The dogs will run up and down the fence line. They have dug out before. They are extremely dangerous, as y'all well know, from what they did to Willie. The, um, Let's see, I wrote a couple of notes down here on it. Uh, I know that one of y'all's wives loved being out in her yard. I used to love being in my yard. I can no longer do that. I can't lay in the sun. I can't work in my yard. I can't mow the grass. I can't plant flowers because I don't know when the dogs are gonna get out. Even if I had a gun sitting next to me, a dog could come up behind you and you wouldn't know it until he's on you. So I no longer have that privilege. At Easter, now all holidays are at my house. At Easter, my family, my boys had to be out there with guns. So my grandchildren and great-grandchildren could hunt Easter eggs. Now it's ridiculous when it comes to that point. 
that you have to have your family armed to be in the yard. We had to watch the children very closely, <coughs> make sure none of them went outside of the house without one of us with them. This is ridiculous. You need to think about that, about how your Easter went, because that's how mine went. And um, also, another thing that needs to be thought about as far as these dogs go, we are on a peninsula. Three sides is lake, there's only one road in and out. The end of the road is the bus stop. Now, I have noticed that the parents and grandparents are carrying their children to the bus stop and picking them up in the afternoon now. But I got to thinking yesterday with the bad weather, what if one parent or one grandparent got stuck in traffic? The child got off the bus and those dogs got out. They would not have a chance. They would, they would be killed. And we know very well from Willie. Willie works out constantly. He jogs all the time. The man would not hurt anything. But yet those dogs attacked him. Yeah. And if he hadn't have been as strong as he is and been able to get to that pile and get a stick and beat those dogs off, he wouldn't be here today. So something has to be done. This is ridiculous. So I'm hoping and praying that you make the right decision and do something for us. Thank you. Thank you. Terry Stevens, or Steens. Good morning. Good My morning. name is Terry Steves. I live at 3020 Bainbridge Road. Uh, I'm here today because the speeding has increased on my road. I've been here before about this. And I had noticed that there's a children at play sign taken down by the county. I went to the road department to find out why. I haven't re had a response yet. And I was wondering if you guys know if all the signs are being taken down in Putnam County. No, I do not know because I'm still waiting to find out why that was done, because the speeding has I, increased I tremendously. I have your phone number here, and I'll call you and let you know uh, after the meeting. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Linda Kemp. My name's Linda Kemp. I live at 103 Grove Street in Melrose. Uh, first, the good news. I want to thank whoever's in charge of the bathroom at Heritage Park in Melrose. Finally, after eight months, the door is open and people are allowed to use our restroom with their children in the park when they have birthday parties and so on. So thank you for that. And. Um, there's still two porta potties there that maybe one of these other parks that need a bathroom could use. So they're still sitting by Heritage Park in Melrose. A um, couple of things. I was online and I saw a uh, thing called a citizen participation request form, which I clicked. It didn't go anywhere. The page is not working. Um, I try to do it a, from a couple of different pages, and it's not working. I, do, I don't know, you know, partic citizen participation is important, and I'm interested in it, but on the website, there's, there's nothing there to help me with that. Okay, one other thing. I'd like to make a, a, a public records re request, and I need to know who to contact for public records? You would. Who would contact? You can contact my office, county attorney's office. Okay, Stacy Manning, thank you. Yes. All right. Um, and lastly, I'd like to know who makes the determination that a dog is dangerous 
and what would a dog have to do to be confiscated? You know, this situation over in Cowpen Lake is deplorable. The people can't even enjoy where they live. I don't know who's going to step up and be the hero in this situation. I mean, this has been an issue, seems like, for at least a month. And uh, no one has been the hero to get down there and help these people. Okay. So on we go. And anyway, with the hope that one of you will do something to confiscate this dog. Thank you. Okay, and I might comment on that, that we cannot do that. Uh, that is other, other facilities that handle that. It's not up to the county commissioners. Okay. Uh, we Who? do oversee the county, but that's, there are certain rules and regulations that we can't supersede. But who, who is the person who makes this? It still goes back to our uh, codes department. Codes? codes? Like you mean animal? Like public county codes. Did Mr. you want to comment on it? To Mr. Chair, if I could, please. Yes. Uh, we've had a lot of comments here this morning about animal control. Um, as you all are quite aware, so are the folks out at Calpin Lake and, and Melrose and, and South Putnam as well. We've had some issues lately with some animal control, uh, with dog bites and things of that nature. There's a lot of things that, you know, there's a misperception out there. One of the things that the county commissioners will have in front of them here shortly is an updated uh, animal control ordinance. That ordinance will give us the ability to do a few more um, things to uh, offer some protection and safety for our community and our citizens, but it will also mirror the, that of the Florida statute because we're not, we can't supersede the statute as well. Uh, the ordinance is in final draft form. I believe it sits today in our, our county, uh, county uh, attorney's office and I've asked to have that reviewed here shortly so we can bring it to the county commissioners for a, uh, for a review and hopefully an approval which will give us an opportunity then to do certain things. One of the things that we will be addressing in the ordinance itself is the and or clause as I like to call it is if we have an issue with a dog bite and we can uh, do through due process uh, determine which dog it was there are still due processes that we have to follow instead of giving the option of quarantining a house or in the county facility uh, it is my stance on this that all dog bites and all dogs that we confiscate will come to the county facility for the for the quarantine period and I think that gives us a little bit more control over the situation that provides our citizens and those that are out there in that, that area a level of, of uh, protection that, that they need to be afforded and those are the things that we're looking at doing. I uh, can't comment nor will I on the uh, active uh, cases that we have going now that, but there are some issues that we're dealing with but that is our stance moving forward. Ms. Kemp, I understand that's not what you want to hear. We, I'm, we can't comment on those but I can tell you that this administration and my staff, we've heard the complaints, we've heard the concerns, and we're working to get something in place that we can actually use to help combat some of these issues. A lot of the issues that we're going to end up combating is not so much the dangerous dog issues, but the owners of those dogs. Those are the ones that are going to end up being held responsible. And that's the ordinance that we're going to put in place in order to give us the opportunity to do that. So, Mr. Chairman, that's where we stand with the animal control ordinance as of today. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, Mr. you know, I've read the, I've Thank read you, the statutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Suggs, um, I appreciate your comments about that. We have worked diligently on this issue since it happened, and what I'm hearing from you is the new stance from our department head, Mr. Powell, and from you is Mr. that one Powell. time is too many, and those dogs will be confiscated. Um, I want to elaborate on one thing that happened yesterday. Um, had a dog bite from a friend of mine who goes to church with me. It happened at the I heard about it in the post office in Palaka. Um, the problem was when you met, we all met with him and you sat down and met with him. Mr. Powell was in a different meeting and could not attend and that's understandable. He couldn't pick out the dog that bit him and that was the problem. There was a pack of five dogs. So it's very, very important that and uh, at codes enforcement went out there, animal control went out there yesterday and did the best we can under those circumstances. So I don't want people who's watching to think that this county commission is not concerned and not doing something. We are. 
and Mr. Powell informed me yesterday that when they were looking at rewriting the ordinance, they found some discrepancy from the state to ours, and they're cleaning that up. So we're going we're to mirror the state's ordinances. So, Mr. Chairman, that's the end of my conversation. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Powell, did you have something you wanted to mention, or you'd rather just... Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Mr. Powell handles these things, and it's, it's uh, you got to be so careful. You don't want to take rights away from other people who have animals. Well, I've read, the, I've read the statutes, and the statutes already seem to cover this situation. Yes, when a dog I, bites I someone, it should be confiscated. From. We've gone through so. the statutes. Mr. Powell, if you would. Actually, the statute changed in 2016. The verbiage is not in there. That's in our ordinance. Uh, the only way that you can confiscate the animal is if it's been deemed dangerous, you can take it the second time. However, on the first bite, uh, unfortunately, it has to kill somebody in order for us to take the animal and put the animal down. That's been since 2016. Statute 767, uh, 1213, 135, and 136. Also, the, uh, the dogs yesterday, we picked up all five of them and we have all five of them in quarantine. They've filled up our quarantine area, but they have all been taken in. We are currently running uh, approximately 40, an 40 dogs now in the shelter of 47 available spaces. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Thank Powell. You. I know you're, you're very busy. Did you have any comment, any comments to go on? We will continue with Linda Powers and Barbara West If you don't mind names and addresses, and try to limit to three minutes, please. Okay, that's fine. Uh, my name is Barbara West, and the property that I'm addressing is one of my properties. It's um, 593 San Mateo Road, San Mateo. Hold that closer. Hmm? Get, get closer to the mic. Okay. There we go. Did you hear me? Yeah. you got to speak right into it. Okay, it's 593 San Mateo Road, San Mateo. My name is Barbara West, and it's one of my properties. It was my mother's. Linda Powers, I'm at 603 San Mateo Road, San Mateo. Okay. Um, we've been having a little issue trying to get the ditches between Horse Landing and Tropic, or Bream, I guess it is, dug out. And um, my mom went through this before she died. They, when they put that road in, they collapsed the culvert. She called for two years till she passed away. Then all of a sudden, nobody cared. Um, and I've got this documented, and there are phone numbers. Um, then all of a sudden, I guess it's a runner down the street calls and says that our ditches are backing up, and my culvert is one of the problems. So. It's costing me for a new culvert because obviously it's been 10 years and they said that's not their issue. So Linda, she's got the same issue. Our, the ditches are actually higher in some places than the culvert. So now I'm having to put in, I'm having to put in a new culvert. Uh, it's supposed to be done this week. I was threatened that it better be done. And um, when you dig down into that culvert, the ditch is to the road, to the driveway. The culvert's down there. And it's been like that, and there is no ditches. They, what they did is when they built the new road, they filled it in so high that on the other side, I think they finally called one of the news stations, and they got out there because those houses looked like they were in a lake, and everybody on my side or my mom's side kept waiting for somebody to come out and help them. You can look at the pictures and see that the water was channeled in, and there is no ditch. It's a dip. And if there's someone we could talk to after this would be wonderful because we, we have pictures and we don't want to take up everybody's time. But we we tried calling the county and they've been very nice to us. But all they do is they come out and dig right around the culvert. And the guys told us we need them to bring out one of those machines that actually digs the ditch. And there was a guy named Mike Shannon. I can't think Strahan. of his name. Strahan. Strahan. OK, he was actually filling in over on Friday. And he said he was going to recommend to have that whole thing dug out from horse landing on that side all the way to Brim. And then when I called about it, I got somebody else, and they're like, eh, we can't do that. So there, what's the point of putting in a culvert when there is no ditches? I think the standing water is... Um, get, get closer to the mic. Hmm? I need her to get closer to the, the mic. The standing water is what's causing the, the culverts to corrode and... And then we're losing our driveway and we're having to replace the culverts, but it's because of the standing water. 
Okay, well, I think you did the right thing. Contact Public Works, and if, you, if that's not doing good, please contact us, and we'll see what's, you know, well, what we, we can already, do. We have already done that. Yes, sir, Mr. S I've talked to Ms. West in the past. She had contacted me earlier, and I had talked to her, and I had contacted Public Works, and I would kind of ran into the same thing, that before any of the other things needed to be done, the collapse culvert had to be done. I guess there's some ambiguity in here about who did the culvert 15 years ago or whatever, and I can't really speak to that because I wasn't here. So I don't know any of the deals, I don't, the whatever. So, you know, I'm hoping that once the, the culvert gets fixed, like you're talking about, you're doing it, if, if they don't come out and do some ditch cleaning after that, please contact me again and I'll go to Public Works with you or for you or whatever and see if we can't do something to help with your problem. I appreciate that, and also, if there's some way I can show you a picture later. Yes, ma'am. Okay, is there a better time, like after the meeting, or make appointment, or? You can do it today, or you can email me if you'd like. Do you have email capability to send Yeah, but I'd picture? rather talk to you, because okay. I want to show you the picture so you can well, understand. I'll be happy to meet with you if you like. It's no problem. Do what you have my after contact this? information? Can we meet after the meeting? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. I sure do. Can I give this to her, Tony, or do I have to give it to you first? <laughs> I know who really runs the show here. <laughs> we want to thank you all. all right, thank you're you. welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, we do need these things brought to our attention because we're just not sure. We don't know everything that's going on out there. All right, is there any other public comment? Any other public comment? Please come forward, give your name and your address. I prefer a blue card to go to Tony, yes. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. Hey, I'm Denise Burnsed. I live at 216 Ashley Lake Drive in Melrose, just inside the Putnam County line. Um, I'm just here to express my desire for the county to ban chaining dogs 24 seven. Um, I've done a lot of research for a lot of years on it. I mean, and in, 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 with the time being as it is now, we've got Animal Planet, we've got news reports, you know, everybody sees that classic, <laughs> that classic, you know, sad story and the dogs, you know, in the middle of a hurricane or, you know, freezing in the middle of winter. Um, I'm trying to rescue one right now that's right behind Melrose Bay. Chained up, saw him a couple weeks ago on a Friday. Long story, and every, and y'all have, re I, I sent y'all an email that includes a video and some pictures. Um, the benefits of doing it, I didn't even realize until I had done more research, it's not, just that it would obviously make, the, the codes would be much more humane, because these dogs on chains, you know, most of the time they're not fed properly. It, you know the story. And they're lonely, and when they're lonely, they eventually can snap, which is then a public health hazard, a public safety hazard. In this dog's case, and in every other case for the past couple decades that I've ever checked in on, these dogs are having to live in their own feces. So there's a picture that I sent to you guys where, I mean, here's the dog, he's living and sleeping and trying, and trying to eliminate somewhere away from his home base, which is a natural act for a dog. So um, having tried to convince convi com the commission to do this in the past, it was kind of hard because there, there are roadblocks to that or there have been roadblocks to that. And one of them was financial. Well, I'm just now learning that for those counties, there's, which is a lot of counties in Florida now have actually changed to become a, a total ban, including our neighbor, Lachua County, just found that out. They, they did this in June of 17, uh, 2017. Um, you know, people are gonna need to get fencing of some sort or some sort of big crate. There's businesses that will, I have to do more research on it, but there are businesses that will help donate supplies or cut, cut the price of their supplies. There are organizations that will help build for people that can't, you know, comply to a new code that says you can't, you simply can't chain your dog all day, every day. 
in terrible weather anymore. So in the email that I did send you, there is a list of the counties that I've found. It could probably use an update because of the site that I ended up finding it from, but I contacted the, uh, am I over time, is that what that means? Okay, yes, I'll make it time. quick. The Alachua County Assistant Manager, her name is Gina Peebles, would be more than happy to talk to you guys on how they did it and they wanted to, she, she mentioned something else about networking, but anyway, that's in the email. Just wanted to just let y'all be aware of that. Please, thank you. please. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. All right, any other public comment before I close that out? So your name and your address. Zenny Best, 200 Hayes Drive, Interlatching, Florida, 32148. I'm here uh, in representation of the mental health community. Uh, we uh, we looked you. at a... Speak closer to that mic. We were talking the last time about the commission, look, the commissioners look, helping us try and find a uh, director for our psychosocial vocational rehabilitation center for people with mental illnesses. All you need to qualify is a, some kind of diagnosis sometime in your lifetime with a mental illness and you can, we can help you uh, get all the, the, the uh, help you need to get through the, uh, your life, your day. Uh, in our community now, mentally ill people are overlooked, uh, and uh, we don't know how to get services. And w with the clubhouse, we'll have a, a local place in our county, in our city here, where we can find the help that we need, Social Security, uh, all housing, clothing. Uh, we have people living in the street, in the woods, uh, and uh, with the with the climate in our in our in our, count, in our country now, people with mental illnesses are really starting to um, ask questions and not get answers, and uh, we turn into animals after a while. I was at a board meeting, and uh, one of the board members said some of them like to live in the woods. We're, we're you know. That was a ridiculous uh, statement, but this is some of the, the, the things that we have to confront before we get to the help we need. And it, with a mental illness, it just takes one no, and then you turn around and you destroy your life and other people's life and the rest of your family goes with you. Uh, with the clubhouse, we're able to get you housing, get you the services that you need. Uh, the government has services for us but we just don't know how to get them. It took the Social Security office away. We can have the Social Security Department and these other health departments come to us if we have a place for them to come. And with a clubhouse, when you get out of the hospital, you're put back into the same environment that made you sick or got you sick or had something to do with your illness. With the clubhouse, you always have some place to go every day. You don't wake up and go sit out on the corner or sit out on the porch. You take, you, we, we're taught how to take care of ourselves. What you need to do today to get you through to tomorrow, that's what happens in the clubhouse. We have people to get in the clubhouse with the same diagnosis that you have, and, <coughs> and others are doing better than others, and we help each other get to where they need to be. But, but in our county now, we don't have, this, we don't have access to uh, the collusion of services or people that have been there years mentally ill, and they know how to get through the system and the processes and the applications and the, and the legal parts of being mentally ill and receiving the services that you deserve. Uh, with the clubhouse, this is what happens. This is, what, this is how we heal each other. And it's so sorely needed. The last time I was here and I spoke before the commission, was, which was the last meeting, uh, we asked the commissioners to help us find a director. Mr. Alex Sharp, we had uh, the building, we had the uh, opening date. He passed away two weeks before our opening date. And so it set us back uh, tremendously. Uh, the board, the last time I was here, they said they'd help us look for a commission, uh, a director for our program. And I'm here today requesting and begging the council to just look at this and help some of the people. I saw a gentleman, but like I said before, walking down the street, one 
pants leg rolled up, no shoes on, big bump on his head, real dirty T-shirt. That doesn't represent Putnam County. That doesn't represent us. We're better than that. That man needed, there was something wrong with that man. And in that, he could hurt himself or someone else, but it's taken for granted that he'll take care of himself. No, that's not the way we live in this country today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other public comment? Any other public comment? Seeing none, we'll close that session and we will move to the consent agenda. I have nothing to say. Mr. Pickens? I have none. I have none. I have none, sir. Okay. Seeing Mr. Chairman, I will make a motion that we approve the consent agenda items A through I. Okay. I'll second that. We have a proper motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Consent agenda moves. We'll move to discussion of the landfill RPF. Uh, Mr. Suggs, did you want to comment on that? Mr. Chairman, the item was uh, brought forward today. As you know, there was an RFP put out in February. It closed uh, March 28th. <coughs> Thank you. Um, uh, close on March 28. Proposals would include uh, viable options for alternative methods of disposal and/or acceptance of Class One waste and other governments and entity from other governments and entities. Uh, proposals were due on the 28th. That, that, that date has come and passed. The county received two responses. The respondents were Waste Pro and Waste Management. Uh, recommendation for action today is to determine whether there is a need for an evaluation meeting or to discuss the responses of RFP 18-11. Okay. Way I understood it. Any comments? Yes, sir. I, I do, Mr. Chairman. I guess I need to pull this a little <laughs> better. Okay. Um, I think that uh, we we asked if we back up just a little bit. We asked for proposals and hoping ho was hoping uh, hoping at, during that workshop that we'd get a proposal. I think a little different. We were hoping that we'd get some kind of a cutting edge or some kind of help with it. And I guess at this particular time, it just came down to basically the two proposals. And and while I I uh, surely appreciate both of those companies taking the time to submit those proposals, um, and I'm not trying to make light of either one of them or their or their effort that they took to do it. Um, basically, one of them says that. Um, one of them says that we'll build you a facility, a transfer facility, and we'll haul your garbage to another landfill, and you mothball your landfill, and um, for a an amount to be determined at a later date. And if the amount is high enough that we get from you, we'll give you a big old cash payment up front. That was basically one of them. And uh, the other one was for 2363, I think was the amount. I don't have it right here in front of me. 2360. 23, what was it? 2360 per ton, I believe. 2360 per ton. They would operate the landfill for us, but not the whole landfill, just the, basically the burying part of the landfill, not all the, the other portions, which are the licensing, the leachate, the all, all the other uh, re recycling tires, all the other aspects of the landfill that add to our costs in the landfill. So um, after talking with staff some about this, um, personally I feel that because while we have this, while we have this request for proposal in place, uh, the staff can't talk to can't go and talk to them. They can't talk to other people. It's kind of a black spot until we do something. So um, in my opinion, I think we just need to reject both these proposals and it'll turn staff loose to go back to talking to people about the next step we need to take. And then we need to workshop this item again as soon as we can fit it in to see what the next step we need to do now that we went through what the commissioners voted to do, which was to have an RFP to see if we could get any interest from somebody in something different than than basically what we just cut proposals on. So 
Um, with that being said, I mean, uh, the, after the the uh, commissioners decide that they that they have more to say or whatever, I'm willing to to offer a motion whenever at the proper time. Okay, let's hold on. Do we have any other comments? Um, I would just like to concur with Commissioner Turner. I don't think it produced the results we were looking for. We're basically still in the landfill business under both proposals. Uh, there was no mention by either company about the uh, scale house, which would be our responsibility, and that, of course, is a lot of our labor and expense and this sort of thing. But I think that it got a ball rolling, Commissioner Turner, and I think that you're very wise in letting staff go out and do what they do in this respected field. And we might find something, but um, I'm, I'm supporting Mr. Turner's request. Mr. Pickens? Yeah, I also agree. Um, I was looking for a little something, something a little different, um, something that we could, uh, you know, turn the landfill over the whole thing, uh, and that's not what we got. So I think uh, I agree with Chip and, uh, and Commissioner Turner. Uh, turn it over to staff. Mr. Harvey? Uh, thank you. <clears throat> I'm going to take a little different approach. Um, I've talked to staff also about the need to go through these proposals. Um, I think it would merit us to continue down this path, invite the two respondents to the table, and let's talk about the uh, concerns that we currently have that were brought up today. But right now, we haven't been able to talk to anybody, and um, the item for discussion today is for a need for evaluation, and I think there is a need. I think that we could open these books up with the two companies and say, Here's our concerns, and do you have, and maybe after that meeting, they both go, no, we're not really interested in that, and we'll move forward. But I think I'd rather talk to them prior to throwing, throwing it out today. Okay. And just so everyone's aware, and I, I also discussed this with the staff, if we mothball what they were saying, mothball our landfill, that's very expensive still. Uh, leachate the scale uh, everything still has to be maintained by our county so it's not as easy as just you know locking the gate it, it doesn't work that way so mr turner i'm gonna turn it back to you i move that we reject both proposals and move forward with a, a workshop to look at other avenues yes sir i'll second it okay so we have a proper first and a proper second all those in favor say aye aye aye, aye. Motion moves. Uh, do we have uh, I think today? You you're asked? looking for opposed? No, okay. Opposed. All those opposed? I oppose. Thank you. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Well, uh, we have four that yes, four, uh, one that's no, and so we'll move forward with this. Is there? Uh, and Mr. Chairman, I would like to say one other thing. I don't see anything that would prevent us if we felt like it from going back and talking to these two people about the exact same thing that they proposed. If right. it turns out that, that after workshop we feel like that's in the best interest of the county, so we're not. We're just giving ourselves and staff the ability to move forward with other proposals. Correct. That's Thank the way you. I see it. That we haven't. We didn't accept either a pro That's proposal. Correct. So, uh, do we need to set a date that we can do this as a special workshop? Workshop. The, uh, if it's a. Uh, if it's okay with the commission, I'd like to look at our calendars after this meeting. Okay. We've got a workshop this afternoon. Maybe we, have a we can come up with a date discuss it this then. afternoon. Okay. All right. Well, great. In that case, then we will close this on the landfill, and we'll move to comments by Mr. Tim Smith. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. If I could get uh, Daniel to do me a favor, will you ask Mr. Wells to step in out at the uh, security section, please? Uh, as a number of you know, uh, that he celebrated an 80th birthday uh, last week, and uh, we had a little uh, get-together for him uh, at the courthouse complex, and uh, Commissioner Turner uh, and Commissioner Harvey were able to come by. But I, I just want to say a few words, because I know we recognize uh, our employees for <laughs> a number of reasons. Although uh, Mr. Wells is not my employee, he works for Wiser, who is contracted to assist us with security. Um, 
but I thought it was important because Mr. Wells, who had a great career at uh, Georgia Pacific, retired from there, uh, then came down and joined us. Why don't you go over to the podium? That way people can, <laughs> yeah, we can see you on the, on the TV uh, while I talk for just a second. And, and Mr. Chairman, uh, I appreciate you giving me just a second here. Um, but I wanted to, to say a few words about Mr. Wells. Uh, he's one of those unique individuals that uh, can really interact with and make anybody that comes to that facility feel welcome and uh, valuable. And a lot of times folks that end up at our facility are, um, you know, there's issues in their lives. They're uh, struggling with how to move forward with that. Um, that's a intimidating and sometimes threatening building and people are nervous. Uh, but I've seen on many occasions when uh, someone had uh, mobility issues, uh, Mr. Wells wheeling the wheelchair out to a car and getting someone, getting them down the ramp up the elevator to the right room. Uh, I've seen him uh, take food to people that needed it. Uh, I have also witnessed him nurture a sick squirrel if you can believe that, uh, who ended up becoming kind of the pet of the courthouse. And the interesting thing was that squirrel, when it had some babies, brought those babies uh, also to the door. <laughs> and that squirrel would just go up the door and sit down and wait for Mr. Wells to come out and feed it. <laughs> but he is a wonderful man and represents all that's right with uh, good public service. And on his 80th birthday uh, last week, it was just gave me an opportunity to publicly recognize him and thank him for all his work. So he continues to do that for us uh, today. So, uh, you know, most people at 80 are fishing or doing something like that, but he's still working with us and helping us do our job. So I just wanted to publicly recognize him and uh, extend a happy birthday to him. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I appreciate what you said, Mr. Smith. I, I've been knowing him since he was a boy. <laughs> and uh, he used to play across the street from where I live. I appreciate all they've done for him, and I enjoy working with a group of people. You couldn't work with a better group of people than I have in 13 years at the courthouse. When I was asked to come down here, I thought I did it for Kenny Downs' favor because Kenny and I worked together for many years. And I always told him, I, when I retired from GP, I was going to go to work for him. I didn't want to work. I just wanted a place to go and have something to do. So they invited me to the courthouse, and I've been down there with them ever since, and I appreciate it. I know most of the guys up on the stand there, too. I remember Terry when he was just a boy. But uh, it's been a pleasure working with uh, people at the courthouse, and I, it's been a pleasure coming up here with uh, working with the county commissioners, bringing the people into the uh, meetings every day, and I've enjoyed it. And uh, Mr. Smith is a dear friend of mine, and Kenny Bow, and I appreciate all you've done for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy birthday. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, well, that was very good. Okay. Um, we now have public hearing for the Better Place Plan Project which includes uh, inventory for vehicles and, yeah, vehicles and equipment. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, what we have before you today is uh, an ordinance of the Board of County Commissioners of Putnam County, Florida, relating to the Better Place Plan, providing an amended general description of the infrastructure projects to be funded, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Um, <clears throat> Real quickly, the board uh, adopted an ordinance uh, back in 2002, which authorized the levy of a 1% surtax, um, which was then um, approved by a referendum of the voters. Uh, that's called the Better Place Plan. Uh, in 2015, um, this uh, surtax was reauthorized, um, again, both by uh, board ordinance as well as referendum to the voters. Um, th that ordinance um, contains um, or has attached to it Exhibit A, which is a project list, which lists the type of improvements contemplated um, uh, by the uh, Better Place Plan um, for um, spending of those 1% um, uh, tax dollars. Uh, it provided that that project list could be amended as deemed 
uh, necessary. Back in, um, I guess it was two months ago, February of 2018, um, this board amended that project list to include the animal shelter and before you today is an additional amendment to that list to include uh, vehicles and equipment. Um, and we break down um, a number of different areas where vehicles and equipment um, may be funded um, by these proceeds. Um, this, these types of um, purchases are authorized um, by the statute, which ena uh, the enabling statute for the 1% surtax, um, and it specifically includes any, any vehicle um, and uh, other equipment that has a life expectancy of at least five years. Um, so that is what we are talking about here. Um, again, consistent with our discussion in February, um, this is, these types of purchases are allowed by the statute. Um, we're just bringing this before you today um, just to increase um, transparency so that everybody um, knows that this list is consistent with those things that are being purchased um, as authorized by the statute. And this is a public hearing. Yes, it is. So do we have any comments by the public on this uh, ordinance? Any comments at all by the public? Seeing none, we'll close that. Uh, commissioners? Any comments? Mr. Right. Chairman, I move approval. Okay. Second. So we have a proper first, proper second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Approved. Thank, thank you all. All right. We, any appointments? I'll start with uh, Mr. Libel. Um, I have none today, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Okay. I have Mr. none. Pickens. Mr. Turner? I have none, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. I have none. Thank you. M Mr. Chairman? Yes. <clears throat> I was asked to reach out to uh, Mayor Terrell Hill of the City of Palatka to see if he'd be willing to continue serving on the Affordable Housing Committee, and he has uh, agreed to accept the appointment, if so be, by the County Commission. Okay. Move approval, Mr. Chairman. I'll second. Okay. Uh, does that have to go through a motion? Yeah, that one will. Uh, yes, this is an at-large appointment. Okay, all right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. The motion moves. All right, so we have, n uh, that'll be all on the appointments. Let's see, so we'll move to county administrator, Mr. <coughs> uh, yes, sir, just a few comments. Uh, uh, first of all, um, you know, we have a, I uh, understand we don't respond a lot to public comment, but I will like to say that I understand that there's been some concerns with the parks and recs throughout the uh, Putnam County uh, this year. So as I uh, just want to make the commission aware that uh, I've met with uh, our director, Ms. Wisnant, and we're working on some things to try to upgrade some of the facilities of some of our local parks. I uh, had an opportunity to tour the uh, South Putnam uh, area. I've uh, been to Francis Park and, and just this past Friday I was out at the one out off of Twin Lakes, is it? <laughs> Lakes. I, I'd say that uh, cautiously because I was lost for the first time in Putnam <laughs> County last Friday. I afternoon. took him a ride on West Putnam. A <laughs> uh, little ride is an understatement. Uh, but, you know, we do have an opportunity with the amount of uh, uh, parts we have in our county, the amount of folks that visit our county and, and our youth that participate at these parts that uh, we need to take a serious hard look at what it is that we're offering and uh, we need to address those concerns. Uh, you know, me being a former um, uh, uh, baseball coach, AAU coach, it, it just, you know, I want to see uh, activities for our youth in these parts because it just means so much for, uh, for our community. So uh, we'll be looking at that very hard this coming budget cycle. Uh, also, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Tompkins is not here today, nor is our Deputy County Administrator, Mr. Reynolds. I sent both of them down to uh, the Water Management District meeting this morning. Uh, fortunately, I uh, sent them last night so they could beat this rain and be safe. Uh, we're waiting to hear. Uh, we've got two outstanding opportunities uh, uh, being heard this morning by the Board of Directors at the Water Management District. Uh, that would be the Pico Road, LC Road uh, area, as well as the area around Horse Landing. Uh, we had an opportunity to apply for a grant to help get some of these septic tanks off the system and hook up to our sewer system. 
Uh, I want to commend Commissioner uh, Turner this morning because he held the uh, open house meetings where we had to uh, get folks to sign up to participate in this project. And uh, hopefully with, uh, with some blessing this morning and, and good news from the Water Management District, we're in line for about $1.2 million to fund both of those projects. And uh, again, uh, uh, Commissioner Turner, thank you for your assistance on that. And I uh, think uh, it was a very quick turnaround. I've got to give props to, uh, to staff. Uh, Mr. Nimitz, I believe, is here in the audience this morning, worked extremely hard. Uh, Public Works in, in general worked extremely hard putting those meetings together on very short notice and, uh, and got those, uh, I believe you had, what, about two or three days turnaround time, if I'm not mistaken, on that grant. And listen, for, for to have that short of a period of time to get a meeting together, to host it, to get all the paperwork done and get back in and be on the list for funding, it's a tremendous uh, you know, accomplishment, and they need to be commended for that. So, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Turner. Um, I, I thank you for the accolades, uh, Mr. Suggs, but it really was not me. It was it was Public Works. They found out about this grant, I think, and they had and they had about two days to decide if we were going to go after it or not. About one more day or two more days to set up our meeting and, and meet with the residents and I think they had three more days to turn it in to the end of the, when they could to the uh, deadline so while well I would like to take the accolades for this I can't it's uh, public works they did a good job on this one for the county thank you let's give them a round of applause yeah. Yeah. I was, I was hoping to get a message before we broke up this morning. I hadn't got one yet. I'd like to, to get an explanation, if I could, Mr. Chair, yes, from Mr. Please. Suggs or um, Mike Nimitz. Uh, is it two projects and one grant or two grants and two projects? Two and two. Two, and two. 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 Okay, so we're getting both of them, possibly. Possibly. That's, that's, right. that's, that's what we're counting on this morning. Right. The information that was supplied and put together uh, and put forth in the uh, packet uh, was deemed responsive enough to show that there was a great need and, 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 uh, and ranked high enough to at least be considered on both projects. Well, I commend Mr. Nimitz. We've had a great past 10 months with Water Management District, and I know you've been key in that. Thank you. We, when, when we're talking about Water Management District, I'd you know, be remiss if I didn't say, you know, he comes to our meetings when he's in town and, and has an opportunity. We need to we need to make sure that we thank Jim Troyano with the Water Management District because he has really been instrumental in helping us as well as the other municipalities uh, in Putnam County uh, be fruitful in our attempt. So uh, next time you see Mr. Troyano, I'd, I'd suggest we all say thank you very much because he's working real hard for Putnam County. He sure is. Uh, Mr. Chair, the last thing I have this morning is uh, the commission at the uh, at, a, at a workshop, a transportation workshop, we talked about going out for an RFP uh, with the Better Place plan to look at um, getting a bond for $10 million and then $20 million overall on uh, getting some road repairs done and moving forward on that. I had a great conversation with Mr. Smith and Ms. Franks last week about this. Uh, we're in the process of uh, doing our research, getting information gathered up to put an RFP together. Uh, one of the things that we talked about is uh, some of the areas in the RFP will be reaching out to those potential uh, uh, agencies and lending institutions that would like to do business with us, working on getting some feedback on, on rate structures and things of that nature. Uh, I've asked Ms. I, I let Ms. Franks know that I bring this up today, so if there's any other questions that we may have here today or any other comments or concerns from the Commission, now would be the time to let us talk about it so we can help Ms. Frank get, a, uh, uh, get the RFP out on the street that, uh, that the Commission is looking for. Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, my only question would be to Ms. Frank, is there any, is there any questions that you may have that <clears throat> we can give you direction on or are you pretty clear at this point about what we're looking for as far as uh, proposals from the banks? What I found is um, how we did it in 2006. <clears throat> I actually found those letters and um, if it's okay with y'all, we can structure it the same. It was requested to be like a line of credit such that it would have drawdowns during um, a drawdown period. And then there was a stated um, ending date for the drawdown period. The county would have paid interest during that drawdown period. And I would assume we could go ahead and ask them if we wanted to make principal payments during that time also. And then at that time, when the drawdown period was done, it was to be converted to a revenue note with a maturity date ending with the, better pla the current Better Place plan. And then, of course, the, um, the Better Place plan was the, um, 
you know, the security, the collateral for it. Um, so that's how the former Better Place Plan notes were structured, how they were requested. Um, I also found out that USDA has a community facilities program that we could apply for with a term up to 40 years. That would probably take a little bit longer to get in place because they said it would be a bond. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, the interest rate on the on the USDA RD money that they were talking about is actually higher than what it looks like the banks may offer. Um, not sure yet until we get our proposal, but if we can, if and it will add probably at least a year to the process to go through RD to try to get the money instead of going back through the uh, through normal channels. So I think the only difference between this and what was done years ago is that the uh, is that we're going to have to do it in two. <clears throat> it looks to me like two loans because uh, there's a maximum of 10 million in a calendar year. We've been told that we're allowed to borrow and remain qualified for a tax advantage loan. And so if that's the case, then if we could, if we could do part of it this year and during the negotiations with the, with the bank, as far as what they would propose, if we could go ahead and ask them how they would handle the second loan and I mean the second portion of the loan, would it be, one big loan in two different years and classified in two different years or would it be would it be two separate loans because of the way to remain qualified um, i would also like to know what the difference between the uh, between a qualified and non-qualified loan is and uh, we were looking at that the other day but it wasn't a proposal it was only a a reach out to your banking to your banking um contacts and so but it, it seemed to me like it was only eight or ten or twelve basis points difference between the between one and the other so i mean if it's that close um it may be you know we've got something else and i haven't brought this up yet i was going to do it under con commissioner comments but because it fits right in with the discussions that we're having mr chairman if you'll allow me i'll go ahead and bring it up right now. Yes, sir. I was told last week or week before last week one day that we have taken the money that we used to build our, that we have set aside for our new sale at liner at the landfill and we used it to pay debris cleanup. Mm -hmm. And so if, if we deem that we're going to run out of capacity sooner than we think because we don't have the money to build the sale, it may be that we're going to also have to borrow the money. He didn't spend it all, but just a portion of it that he needed. We might need to determine how much money we need to build that sale or to line that new sale. And then um, I don't know if we can pledge our FEMA monies as payment to that loan or not, but we could use that one as a, because it's a lot less money than what the first loan we were talking about. We might could pledge. Uh, the FEMA money to repay it and, and pay the extra eight basis points and then which is not nearly as much on the the three million dollars I don't know that it's three million but around three million dollars what I think he ended up having to take out of the sale money um, to do the other isn't that about right that he used for cleanup yeah I think well, he's not here today no. he's on vacation about three million dollars I think in general terms so <clears throat> Okay, so anyhow, I, that may be something else we need to look at also where our, whereas we're looking at the landfill and our capacities on it and the, and how quick we're going to need the sale to the side of where the one is now that's almost at capacity until they get another sale and then they can start building them up, but the foot's not, footprint's not big enough yet. This is at least what I was told last week by our sanitation director when I was discussing it with them. So, um, I think that if we could ask Ms. Frank today just to see what's available, I don't think anybody here has approved it yet or not or whatever, but if she can just find out what's available on an RFP, what is qualified and what wouldn't be qualified and the basis points between them, which is pretty much she found that out now, but it was through a contact and not through an official request. So if maybe she could just do the re official request the same way that she's already done, I think it would help us be able to make the decision on how to move forward from where we are. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. 
May I? Go ahead. Thank you, sir. Um, there is value to this plan that Commissioner Turner is talking about. And um, Mr. Nimitz, would you help me out for just a second? You and I spoke, if you'll come to the podium, you and I spoke last week about the difference in pricing per mile of paving, turning dirt into pavement. And I believe last year the number was closer to 400,000. And then this year, when Press mentioned it in, in our workshop, it was $283,000 per mile on a normal, all things considered. Um, it, it, I think it was about 110000 different per mile, which is significant from last year to this year. And we have those contracts in place now to provide that, correct? Yes, that's correct. For the resurfacing, <coughs> we do the continuing services. Okay. Uh, so we'd still have to put the dirt to pavement out to bid, but yes, what that's we're correct. seeing those prices come in around two hundred and eighty three thousand a mile. Yes, sir, that is correct. Good. Which is a tremendous savings from last year to this year. It, it is. That yeah. that's correct. And, uh, and there's economy to scale, we could also maybe see possible a reduction in that if mobilization is taken out and other things. So this very well might be a very big win-win for Putnam County here. Yes, absolutely. The larger the, the, the package, the more attractive it is, and the more competitive uh, the contractors will be. And um, mobilization is a cost uh, right. uh, consideration, so that does bring the price down per mile. Okay. So the more mileage you can get, you know, uh, the more we should pursue that. Thank absolutely. you, Mr. Nimitz. Yes, Thank sir. you, Mr. Chairman, for the opportunity. Any other comments on this? I just would like to ask Ms. Frank, does she have, is, are you good now as far as where we're going? Or? Well, Terry Suggs and I just were um, mentioning, so um, we could request actually two different ways. We could request one loan, like a line of credit again, at the $20 million, which would be non-qualified, or we could, and then we could send out a separate RFP for one loan at the $10 million, which would be bank qualified with the idea, and we could state it in our RFP, that down the road that we will probably in the future ask for another $10 million. I seriously doubt that the banks are going to give you a rate for a second $10 million loan today because they're going to want to lock something in, and it would be, would be structured like two loans. You'd have one loan today at the $10 million, and then a year from now you would be requesting another and you could even have two separate banks at that point because then you would go out for another RFP on a secondary $10 million. Um, so my understanding from what you're asking is go ahead and send out two RFPs today, one for $20 million non-qualified and one for $10 million qualified. No, ma'am, that's not what I requested. Uh, today I think what we need to do is send a, send a request to the banks. To, uh, that's the reason it was $10 million a year to remain qualified. And so... I think that we need to ask each bank, explain to me what we're looking for. We're looking for two $10 million deals that would be qualified. So that means $10 million this year, $10 million next year. If they can't give us the second rate yet or whatever, they can just say so. But it may be that they give that they offer a second rate even at this time, you know, it, as knowing that they're going to get both $10 million loans and that they would both be qualified. Okay. So... That would that's, be my suggestion. Yeah, I concur. Mr. Chairman, if I just might add, in regards to um, listening to this discussion, in regards to utilization of continuing services contracts, there are instances where um, that use <coughs> might be limited based upon where the funds are coming from um, for those particular projects, just to let you know. We'll move right into county administrator, I mean, county attorney's comments. I have nothing further. Okay, then we'll do the commissioner's comments, and I'll start with Mr. Turner. Um, Mr. Chairman, I think I uh, would like to take this opportunity to, uh, to thank staff again for participating and helping me out with things I don't know. Um, they seem to always make the extra mile and I appreciate that um, also uh, the uh, I would like to uh, say that I truly enjoyed and congratulations to the uh, not to take Mr. P uh, Commissioner Pickens thunder but I knew it's coming but the catfish festival this past weekend was real nice I enjoyed it uh, he allowed me to help him some in his booth and his swamp cabbage booth <coughs> 
I'm certainly certainly not a swamp cabbage expert, but I know a lot more than I did last week. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and uh, also, Mike Nemec, before you leave, would you uh, meet with me and Miss West, please? Thank you, and that should do it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Harvey? You know, I really do <coughs> want to thank, um, and I know C Commissioner Pickens is going to mention this, but as the president of the Interlochen Rotary Club, we, um, our Rotary Clubs work together, uh, the four of us, and then add the uh, fifth one in from Hastings. And it's just a pleasure to go down to Catfish, and it's a pleasure to go to other uh, organizations that we do together and work together and um, make a difference in this community. I also want to thank Mr. Suggs. I did put him in the car last Friday and took him to places he didn't even know existed in West Putnam. Um, he, thought, he heard the banjos playing, if you will, but um, we were way out there and he saw some tremendous elevation of land. He saw countless dirt roads. He saw trash piles. He saw everything. Um, so he's got a better appreciation of West Putnam. And when he mentioned the parks out there, you know, if you haven't been around for a while and, or know the history of some of these things, the West Putnam Park was done by a gentleman named Charles Camo, and he worked for Windstream or Altel at the time. And he got the Army Reserves to bring their pans out and take that old borrow pit and level it out. Um, I remember standing there watching him do that. And, um, but I want to say that, you know, when, when Miss Wisnett came to work for the county, she came the same time I did, and she inherited a lot to do. And um, I want to say that it, it's looking better and better. There's still a lot of work to be done. And um, again, I think Mr. Suggs has a better appreciation of some of the areas now and what's gonna take place and what needs to be done. Um, Putnam County is on the brink of greatness and I really do believe our best days are ahead of us. And uh, with this commission working together as we have, it's encouraging. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Mr. Lymel. Passed over. Um, I would like to thank Commissioner Pickens too for a wonderful Saturday morning at Catfish Festival and seeing all the folks, it's always a, a great time. Um, I'd like to remind everybody that this Saturday we have the Palaka Bicycle Festival. So around Putnam County there will be a lot of cyclists all through the back roads, so keep eye out, be careful, and come participate. Uh, they stage at Fred Green Park in the city of Palatka, and there will be, they'll be from out of state, all over the state, and just a lot of bicycle folks and a lot of activities planned. The other big event this Saturday is U-Turn. If any families that you might know or even yourself are affected by this opioid crisis, uh, this is a great event. It's at our Triangle Park um, out on US 17 and Highway 19. And you will see the services from around the state there that uh, help this situation. Uh, the sheriff can tell you this is a place that you can find help. You truly can. Mr. Best, I know you're here on those same lines. and uh, but. They have a national recording artist as entertainment, and then there are faith-based groups all through this uh, tent area that can help you with a situation. So anyhow, if you, if you want to come out for pure entertainment, it's that too. And uh, there's some great bands and great people, and there's no cost to it. And they'll feed you really good. There are games and bounce houses and everything under the sun for children. It's a, a really a great day in the park. So I encourage everyone to come out to U-Turn this Saturday at Putnam County's Triangle Complex. And outside of that, I don't have anything else. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And now we'll go to Mr. Pickens, the Catfish Festival. <laughs> okay. Um, I wasn't really going to say anything about catfish. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I, I'd like to start by thanking uh, Angie Wisnot, Joe Groves, uh, County Administrator Suggs, and uh, Mike Pegg. Uh, we met at the South Putnam Complex and, and discussed just some concerns there. And uh, I know Recreation works on a very limited budget, uh, but we're going to move forward with some improvements there. And uh, that facility really gets used, uh, especially for soccer. Uh, over 200 kids participate in a soccer program that's coming up uh, in the fall. And uh, 
I will say something about uh, Catfish Festival. It was our 40th year, uh, and other than the rain, uh, it was a very successful uh, festival. Um, I want to thank everybody for um, their participation and all the volunteers. Uh, I know Bob Stender's back there. He and Brenda Bridges came down and helped. Uh, also, the uh, Rotary Clubs from the, the Crescent City Club, which sponsor it, the Noon Club in Palaka, the Breakfast Club, and the Interlochen Lakes Area Club. They all participate and uh, they help us with this festival. Uh, and also, I want to thank uh, Chairman Goddard. He came down to actually boot out cabbage, and then uh, Commissioner Turner came and cut the cabbage up. And uh, I appreciate that, so you know a little bit about the work that's involved. Uh, and also, I want to thank Larry, Chairman or uh, Commissioner Harvey, for emceeing. Uh, Larry uh, gets down about eight o'clock in the morning and starts uh, the MC process at nine. And it goes to about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So it's a full day for Commissioner Harvey. also want to thank uh, the commissioners who participated in the uh, parade. Uh, Commissioner Turner and myself did, along with um, Commissioner Libel. He brought his bell. And so that was recognized. And my wife. <laughs> a wife and, and a bell. And also the constitutional <laughs> officer, Mr. Smith, was there. And, and I know uh, school board representatives and clerk corps. Um, Supervisors of Elections, I believe, and uh, property appraiser. And I also want to mention uh, our Sheriff's Department. They're always well represented with uh, Sheriff DeLoach and Joe Wells. Uh, they bring their horses down. But when the DeLoach family comes to a parade, uh, it's like a little entourage. They bring their whole family. So it's Gator, his wife Jennifer, their three boys, and this year they had their niece with them. So it's, it's neat to see them using... Uh, that is a family event, and I really appreciate it. So thank you, and uh, that's all I have. Thank you. I'm going to ask Mr. Suggs. I think you had a couple comments. Yes, sir. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, one thing is, uh, as you know, I've been uh, working with staff. We're going to try to do our uh, uh, first recognition of, of countywide employees uh, in the next couple of weeks where we are, uh, we're going to bring them in and, and present them with some pins uh, for their time of service and thank them for what they do for Putnam County. And, uh, their their respective departments and for our citizens. I'm hoping that's a success. It's going to be a, uh, a trial by fire, but we're going to work through some some things and we're going to make this one of the things that we can be proud of in recognition for our staff. Uh, not just the, the Board of County Commissioner staff, but I'd like to invite all the constitutionals as well to participate. I think it would be a, an excellent opportunity for us to uh, have a, a, the ability to thank them all publicly. I think that's that's well deserved. Uh, and also, lastly, uh, a bit of a sad note, you know last week uh, the city of Palatka lost one of their own and, um, you know, had an opportunity to uh, uh, represent Putnam County at the uh, memorial service on Saturday afternoon. And it's one of those uh, uh, tributes that the fire department public safety folks, uh, when, when it comes to uh, passing on one of their own, they, they know how to do it. They do it right. It's a wonderful ceremony. Uh, it's well represented by uh, public safety folks from all over the state. And, um, you know, it's a, a very emotional time, and one of, of reverence. And I was very proud to be there. And I just want to publicly, and, and I'm sure uh, uh, this won't be the last time here, and I'm sure the city folks will, will want to do it in the future, but I uh, can't say enough for uh, our public safety folks, Quinn Romay staff, Quinn, Ryan, uh, Anthony Gedris. When we got the... the uh, the initial call that night was uh, was there. Uh, Quinn and I were at the hospital till about two that morning with the family. But our staff went above and beyond just to make sure everybody was was uh, taken care of. Uh, we filled in where necessary. Uh, we've heard nothing but great things from the city of Palanca. Uh, but that is that's the type of relationship that we share. And uh, very proud of that. Very proud of how we do work together. I'm very proud of Quinn and his staff for what they did. Uh, they're in a very difficult time for the city of Palanca, but you know, when the need arises, I have found since I've been in this seat that we pull together, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter if it's county, city, or what. Uh, this commission, uh, this staff, uh, will do whatever it takes and, is, uh, and whatever is necessary to uh, to handle a difficult situation. And I'm very proud of that, and I'm very proud of my staff, and I'm very proud of the opportunity to share that with you folks here this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I want to thank the staff. I, I don't think the public realizes just how much you do and, and the answers that we, we demand and, and you come up with. So I, I want to thank you very much for the, 
timely response that we do get our answers. And I've had the opportunity to work with this commission up here. These guys actually work. Uh, it doesn't look like it up here, but they actually work. Thank you. Um, they, they do a good job. And I do want to say something about the Catfish Festival and Mr. Bill Pickens. Bill did not slow down. I don't know if he slowed down at all, but he does a lot of prepare work that's behind the scenes you don't see, some hard work, uh, but he is a key part of, of the Catfish Festival, and it was, it was, it's just enjoyable to work up there. And those that don't get out and see Putnam County, you're just missing it. It's, uh, we are very fortunate to have this county, and right now we're one of the largest recharging stations for our aquifer and we are recharging it very well right now so <laughs> with that thank you very much and we are closing this meeting <laughs> you got time to go to the funeral i do i do i'm gonna make